How are you doing, sir? Good morning. You got a big event coming up this Saturday, November tenth. Yes. Free to breathe. It's a five k run and a one k uh, memorial walk. It's a it's a five k run walk. Mm -hmm. So you can run or walk the event. Okay. And then we have a one mile memorial walk. Okay. Memorializing people that died of lung cancer in Charlotte County. Now, kind of tell us your journey with this because you've been intimately uh, connected yeah. with yeah. lung cancer. Well, actually, this year I celebrated uh, five years of survivorship. So God I was bless. diagnosed. Congratulations. And thank you. I was diagnosed October 5th of 2007 and uh, went through about a year of treatment for a stage 3 lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, people with stage 3 lung cancer generally don't survive. The survival rate is about 5%, so I'm pretty lucky to be here at all. One out of 20. And uh, <clears throat> I was very disturbed by the, um, the lack of research funding for lung cancer. Yeah, it uh, seems to be focused in so many other areas. Yeah, yeah. I didn't understand why Lung cancer is the number one cancer killer. It kills more people than the next five cancers combined and still gets the least amount of research funding on a per capita basis or however you want to look at it. Mm. Nominal dollars, 290 some odd million dollars goes to lung cancer research. But in comparison, um, and it kills 160,000 people a year. Mm -hmm. um, people, I think the main reason that it's not funded is that people uh, have, a, uh, have a, a kind of a preconception that uh, if you have lung cancer, you must have smoked, therefore you deserve what you get. It's a lifestyle thing. And, uh, you know, you it's brought it on yourself and, yeah. and so forth. And it's not true any longer. I mean, uh, most people that have lung cancer today either quit smoking or they never smoked. That's 60% of the people that have lung cancer. There are, um, uh, if you were to rank the people that never smoked or have lung cancer, it would be the sixth leading cause of cancer death. Never smoked. So that's twenty to 30,000 people a year that never smoked and have lung cancer. And what we're finding is that today, lung cancer is uh, becoming more prevalent in younger women. Uh, you can even find lung cancer in children, believe it or not. Hmm. So people don't know that. They kind of uh, have this view of lung cancer. Somebody that smokes three times yeah, yeah. a day. Yeah. And, you know. Jolly. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so... Uh, when I understood what was going on and, and um, kind of this disparity in funding, mm -hmm. I decided that it was not right. And, and the thing is that there are probably about 70 million people in the United States today that did the right thing and quit smoking. They may have quit 10, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Their chances of getting what are still very elevated. Anybody that's ever smoked has an elevated chance of getting lung cancer. And yet we don't spend any money on detection, or there's no detection, there's no prevention, there's no um, protocol for screening, as there is for many other cancers. And I didn't understand that. And, and I found out that uh, really the reason is because of lack of research funding. Well, why is that? I mean, you, you would think, it because, you know, the, you've been hearing uh, uh, commercials, seeing commercials, uh, you used to quite a bit, and then it does, it does seem to fall off. You don't hear about these you hear about a lot of medications, you hear a lot, a lot about breast cancer awareness, and yeah. prostate cancer, and things like that, right. but you just, and AIDS research, but you don't hear anything about... Well, uh, if you consider how many people survive from some of these other cancers, yeah, um, there's a lot more voices for those cancers. So, for example, breast cancer, it's an 89% survival rate. So if you're diagnosed with, with breast cancer, you have an 89% chance of being here in five years. Um, well, you know... A couple of years ago, with Obamacare kicking in, that those <laughs> those stats could <laughs> I go down know. a little bit, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, but you know what I'm saying. The yeah. uh, prostate cancer has a very high uh, survival does. rate. Uh, even does. colon cancer, which mm -hmm. is very deadly, um, has a 65 uh, percent five-year survival rate. Mm -hmm. The overall survival rate for lung cancer is 15 or 16 percent. So that means that there are no voices. Mm -hmm. So those of us that survive like myself, need to be a voice for lung cancer, which is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And you've also compiled a, uh, a little book of well, your experience, Well, you know, too. it's kind of a, uh, the, the journey's been interesting, but, yeah. uh, you know, I, I was diagnosed with lung cancer, basically fought the disease for a year. I went up to Washington to see why uh, there was this disparity in funding and realized that um, legislation is not going to fix the problem because uh, the, the, the political people are going to listen to the voices, and if there's no voice for lung cancer, they're not going to mm -hmm. try to legislate body part research. Yeah, sure. It's just not going to sure. happen. 
The only way it's going to happen is if we have a voice, and since most lung cancer patients are gone, I figured that the best thing to do would be to have some kind of a, um, a ground, grassroots uh, organization. Mm -hmm. So I got involved with the National Lung Cancer Partnership, which is uh, uh, the organizers of these Free to Breathe events that happen all over the country. And, uh, uh, in or and, and I thought, I'd been writing a blog for my children, mm -hmm. because they don't live with us. They're all, you know, we're empty nesters, and they've all left with the nest. Um, they wanted to know what was going on during my treatment, so I would write a weekly blog and tell them what was going on. Well, that blog got out. <laughs> so it did. Mm -hmm. and, and and people said, "Oh, you're a pretty good writer. You ought to, you ought to be writing for the newspaper or writing a book or something." So uh, at that time, that was the 19, 2008, I approached uh, the Charlotte Sun, mm -hmm. and the feeling fit editor over there was uh, Jennifer Wadsworth. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the week I approached her, her mother had died of lung cancer. Oh, wow. So she was inclined to agree with me that, <laughs> uh, that she was, yeah. That we, we need to shine a light on lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she allowed me to take my blogs, and for the, the year that I had written, we started adapting them for a newspaper article. And uh, I've been writing in this Charlotte Sun Feeling Fit ever since. Well, now that five years have gone by, I really thought I was going to be writing about uh, dying from lung cancer. Okay, and I thought it was going to be very dramatic, and yeah, um, and that didn't happen. <laughs> so well, it's good. Well, <laughs> yeah, it, it's good. That's Maybe the I idea, so good right? For book sales. <laughs> Well, you want to be able to spend that money from the book sales while you're living. Well, that's right. And so, well, it's not for me, actually. Uh, so what I did is I took all of these uh, articles and I compiled them into a book. Um, I, I've written about 140,000 words in the last five years on lung cancer. Took about half of those and put it into a book that's about 230 pages called Living with Lung Cancer, My Journey. And uh, the idea of this is that we're going to use this book as a way of, another way of getting the word out about lung cancer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very beneficial, I think, to people who have been diagnosed to have a book that they can read and say, oh, here's somebody that actually lived. And, uh, and that they can relate to going through the process. Right. So mm -hmm. I talk about uh, what happened to me. Mm -hmm. And I say right in the book that, you know, the journey is different for everybody. Nobody has the same treatments. Nobody has the same outcomes. Um, but at least it gives people hope that there is a you know a path through. Yeah. And so my <clears throat> my plan is to try to promote this um, and sell it uh, to as many people I can, and I will circulate the money back to lung cancer research. Excellent. So that's what Good I'm doing. Good for you. Yeah. So uh, the the event on Saturday. Yes. Is the free to breathe, which we've been doing now for the last. Uh, this yeah. will be the fourth year. Fourth year. Okay. So the first year we raised about thirty thousand dollars. We had about three hundred people come out. Uh, second year, we raised uh, $58,000, and we had maybe 400 people come out. Um, last year, uh, we raised $78,000, and we had uh, close to 800 people uh, participate. Fantastic. I just looked at the numbers for this year, and uh, we are at pre-registered. Um, we, we were at 605 last night. I'm expecting we'll have at least another 100 and then we'll have probably about 200 people register on event day. Today is the last day to register online at www.freetobreathe.com. And so anybody that listening out there that's planning to come to this event, uh, you can save yourself some money because it's cheaper to register online Indeed, yeah. uh, than to do event day. We're trying to get as many people pre-registered so that the uh, uh, registration process goes smoothly. But the event starts... Um, uh, the event at starts at, uh, at well, registration will start at 6, mm -hmm. and we're hoping to get the race off by uh, 8, 8.15. Um, the race will go off, the fast guys will be done in 15 or 20 yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an hour out of your day. It is, it's not, and, and then the people that are walking in the, in the one mile memorial walk, uh, they'll be done probably around 9 o'clock. And then you'll have all the... And then we'll have a rally, and, a rally, and, and we have, yeah. uh, we have um, uh, breakfast for people. Um, we are going to, um, uh, uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, interesting things going on while you're there. Speakers and seminars. We have some foods. speakers, in, but we'll, we'll be out of there at 9, 30, 10 o'clock. Yeah. So it's a great way to spend the morning. It's fast. 
Uh, and my hope is that, um, uh, well, between the 600 pre-registered, figure another 100 or so will register, plus people that come on event day. Last year we had almost 200 people on event wow. day. So I'm hoping we'll get almost 1,000 people to come to this. Make it one of the biggest races in Charlotte County. Please do. And folks, you can get involved. All you have to do is just log on, free to breathe.com or .org. Either one will take you right. there. On the little map up front, just click on South Florida it'll, and then scroll down. You'll see the, uh, the event. You can log on, take care of it right now, and you're going to save money by doing it. Today's the last day of pre-registration. That's right. And I just wanted to mention, if you can't come out or you don't walk, you don't run, or it's too early in the morning for you, that's oh, fine. That's <laughs> fine. Uh, you can go on that website and also make a donation uh, of any Indeed. amount. Uh, we're, you know, we're trying to raise money. The goal this year is to raise $100,000. And if we succeed, we'll have raised a quarter of a million dollars in the last four years. That's fantastic. For lung cancer research. And I should say that all of the money, all of the money, will go to research. That's good to know. Yeah. And uh, where can people find your book? My I'm book, sure you'll have some at the event. I am going to, uh, hopefully, if I get enough uh, inventory. I sold out. I had a book sign. And, really? Uh, and sold out my first hundred copies. Fantastic. Already. But, uh, yeah, I, I will have copies of the book at the event. But you can go on Amazon. Okay. Uh, and get it there. It's also available at Barnes and Noble, or you can go to my uh, my publisher, which is Friesen Press, F R I E S E N P R E S S, FriesenPress dot com. They have a bookstore there, and you can buy the books discounted at Friesen Press because you buy them directly from the publisher. Absolutely. No middleman. All right, Tom Capiello, thank you much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good out. luck to you, and congratulations on your continued good health. Thank you. Thank right. you.